Chair recognizes the gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Earlier this morning, this hearing was referred to as a political stunt. I'd like to begin by asking us all to remember that we are joined here today by the men and women of law enforcement, first responders, and the victims of violent crimes. They deserve our serious consideration of this gravely important issue. So let's start with reality. The number of law enforcement officers assigned to a region per capita won't stop crime when law enforcement officers are prevented from doing their jobs by bad law. The number of prosecutors in a community will not stop crime when they do not bring cases and they do not enforce the law. And it isn't enough to have judges on the bench when judges won't follow the rules and won't enforce the laws. We owe a responsibility to the citizens of Washington, D.C. and the visitors from around the world who come to our nation's capital to keep them safe. And all too often they are here and they are the victims of violent crime. They are being carjacked, they are being assaulted, they are being shot in the street. We must face the reality of the crime epidemic in Washington, D.C. and do more. And the reason that we are here is plain and it is obvious. It is the reckless and irresponsible rhetoric and failed policies of the Democrat Party and the Biden administration that has emboldened, emboldened criminals in cities across America. We owe the residents here, and the visitors to our capital, so much more. And as a former federal prosecutor and judge, I will tell you this. There is one thing that reliably keeps a violent predator from recidivating, and it is called prison. Do some offenders deserve second chances? Absolutely. But do murderers, sex offenders, and rapists need to be out on bond? Do they need wraparound services? Do those who are out on conditions of bond who violate them deserve another chance? No, they deserve to be in custody and they need to remain in custody for the safety of the citizens of this community. We need to support the men and women of law enforcement. We need prosecutors who will enforce the laws. We need judges who will force, follow the laws and enforce the rules. It is that simple, and what we see here today, the testimony that we have heard today, is the entirely predictable outcome of the reckless and irresponsible rhetoric and policies of the Democrat Party who are undermining the men and women of law enforcement and the rule of law in America. Mr. Stinson, I would like to start with you. In your prior testimony, you referenced juvenile offenders specifically. I'd like to explore the effects that you believe policies related to juvenile offenders are having on the crime problem in DC and how we could be doing more to ensure that that issue is, is under control. Well, thank you for your question. Uh, I think we both agree as former prosecutors that we need a juvenile justice system and that is designed to help rehabilitate those people who make dumb mistakes when they're young and we believe most can be rehabilitated. But when you do murder, multiple murders, rapes, carjackings, you heard the chairman mention the number of carjackings committed this year by juvenile offenders. They're, the number one age is 15 here in the district who are doing armed carjackings. Uh, and so under Title 16, which is a local law here in the district, the U.S. Attorney's Office can take 16 and 17 year olds uh, and prosecute them as an adult. Uh, many other jurisdictions, don't have that type of shackles, and they allow violent criminals who do murder, rape, robbery, and the rest of it, and wave them to adult court, uh, which is what should happen in this city because we have a juvenile violent crime problem. And if I could just add, uh, when I was talking about gun possessions and taking it to federal court, I said felon in possession. And as you know, as a former federal prosecutor, felon in possession under 922G, uh, on 922G, is a mandatory minimum. And what happens in this city is that they charge him with, they charge them with, in Superior Court, they charge him with carrying a pistol without a license, felon in possession, unregistered firearm, unregistered ammunition. They deal away the felon in possession in Superior Court. They plead to carrying a pistol without a license and a 
Pemberton said, uh, they get a slap on the wrist. And so when I was a criminal defense attorney, I wanted my client to get the best deal. I want them to be tried in superior court here in the District of Columbia, not federal district court, regardless of what the sentence is, because you know they're going to get a hard sentence in, in federal court. Should those juvenile the gen I'm offenses— I'm sorry, the, the gentlelady's time has expired. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you.